Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Jojo. And this is Pancho. Today we'll be doing a very different video. We'll be talking about our cultural differences, similarities and stereotypes. As you know or you may not know, I'm from Kenya. And I'm from Peru, which is in South America, a completely different continent. So we'll be sharing our experiences. You ready? Yeah. The main difference, uh, which is so obvious, it's the language. We speak different languages. I mean, in Peru, you speak Spanish, and in Kenya, we speak Swahili and English. And not forgetting, we have more than 40 tribes in Kenya, and mm. each has a distinct language. So you can imagine how many languages are spoken in Kenya. So mm. in Peru, do you only speak Spanish, or do you have other tribes that speak different languages? We mainly speak Spanish, but we have other peoples, indigenous peoples that live in the Amazon rainforest that speak their own language and have their own cultures, but they're small groups, right? Which language? Uh, they, they have Shipibo, uh, Shawi, they have different languages depending on where they're from. But then there's a people in the mountainside of Peru, mm -hmm. in the Andes, and they speak Quechua, and they're Quechua people. Quechua? Mm -hmm. How does that sound like? Do you speak Quechua? I know a few phrases like... Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, please stop making this up. Um, no, what it, it means now you know. Say now it you again. understand. Intindikichu manachu. Intindikichu manachu. Mm. Okay, I've never heard of that. And uh, so I am uh, from central Kenya. We speak Kikuyu. I've been trying to teach Pancho Kikuyu. Pancho, can you say at least two Kikuyu words that you know? Mm -hmm. Dereda. Dereda, it means I want. Besha. Oh, that's a big one. Besha, it means money. So what, uh, what makes, what do you think, since you've been to Kenya, what's so distinct about the Kikuyu tribe, the Meru, Embu, Luya, Luo? Have you noted any distinction or any stereotypes within the tribes? Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> like Kikuyu what? Kikuyu especially, they're people that are really go-getters, right? They go out and they do stuff, they keep busy because they like money, but also because they're just business people and they're always on the go. Okay, but who doesn't like money? I think that's a good thing, no? I'm gonna take that positively. Oh, yeah. So Kikuyu, we are known because we are entrepreneurial and I think that's, that's a good thing. So speaking of language, um, of course, we speak English in the house, a bit of Spanish. He, mm -hmm. teach, he teaches me Spanish. You hablo español muy bien. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we are in Italy, so we have to speak Italian too. So yeah. we speak some Italian as well. So as much as uh, we speak different languages in our countries, we have a common ground and a common language that we both speak. Yeah, because sometimes living here, we meet people that are also from other countries, and we speak Italian with them yeah mm. okay another big one let's talk about food food right so you would think that maybe because peru is in this side and kenya on that side and the horn of africa it's going to be so different but it's not actually it's some things are quite similar yeah i think we have uh, similarities in the food for example we eat a lot of rice in kenya and you also eat rice in peru oh my god if you eat rice we eat more rice maize we have we eat maize we, we invented eat cassava maize. So I think we have um, we have foods that we share. I think the only difference is how we make them. I think Kenyan dishes are tastier. Are you sure about that? We have some popularity. But anyway, we also make a lot of stews, right? Yeah. Things that cook in rice, things that cook in the pot, and then you use the sauce, and you cook the rice with that, and blah. But there's this yellow thing that you use. Right. So that's one difference. I think that we have this, we call it aji. Aji. We have several aji amarillo, aji panca, aji mirasol, and we cook with this, and it gives a different smell and spice, and even spicy. Yeah, I find, okay, the food is not spicy, spicy like Indian spicy, but that aji is, is really spicy. Rocoto is even more spicy. Yeah, so I think, because I don't think in Kenya we use uh, hot spices. Of course, we, we use spices like um, nutmeg, cinnamon masala we have a we use a lot of spices yeah pili pili do you use masala do you, does do you people in peru know what masala is we can't even spell masala masala so i think the only difference is uh, how we make our foods i mean we eat rice and chicken but how we make it is is the only difference do you have any kenyan foods you like because i like peruvian food i like cabrito 
I like Lomo Saltado. Mm. I like, no, to be honest, I like um, arroz con pollo, rice with chicken, but I kind of feel like our chicken is tastier. Or I could have just eaten in a restaurant that didn't make it nicely. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's it's fine. I still think we miss, we make the best chicken. Do you have any Kenyan dishes that you enjoy? Yeah, yeah. I love pilau. Pilau is so good. I also like ugali with fish. Um, and I like githeri. <laughs> githeri. <laughs> githeri. Yeah. And then What's the nyama githeri? choma is always good. Githeri is rice and beans. Yes. No, 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 no. no. Right. Maize and beans. Yes. Maize and beans. I actually don't enjoy githeri as much. You're missing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's weird that he actually enjoys githeri but it's really common by the way mm -hmm. githeri is common and uh, ugali you should actually teach us how to make ugali i think you know how to make ugali by now it's on the bucket list okay guys we'll have a video of pancho making ugali uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. that's the next challenge he's gonna make ugali so i think for the foods we have like in the house we eat um rice chicken beans beans lentils lentils we eat that but i don't i don't eat their he because i find it spicy so he puts their he imagine guys uh, you spend the time making this nice tasty chicken and then he just puts the yellow stuff on the chicken just a little bit to give it that kick yeah i don't know which kick because i make bomb mm, chicken mm. anyway the foods we find a common ground as well for the foods and of course living in italy we have to eat pasta yeah we pizza, also like pizzas and pastas and things yeah. once in a while so you see it's not that different I, and we make it too yeah we make it too. so i think um it's not that different in peru and in kenya in terms of of our foods but you don't have ugali no we don't usually we use more rice or potatoes uh we don't really accompany with ugali like that and which by the way reminds me that's one big difference is how we eat right so in what Peru, do you mean you don't use your mouth like in no we eat this part yeah <laughs> but uh, we eat with our hands like the fried chicken the anticuchos we eat some things with our hands but normally on the table you'll find a fork and a knife like almost always at home or at the restaurant yeah i don't know what he means by that but i think he's trying to say that most uh people in kenya we don't use the fork and knife mm -hmm. i mean what's the point i mean you'll you, get you it wanna... if you ask for it you'll find it you'll find it like in the high-end restaurants you'll mm -hmm. find a fork and knife but in the in our houses it's not so common like just dig in with your hands you know wash your hands and imagine eating ugali with a fork and knife no like of course this. not that's no. an abomination yeah. but i never eat ugali never. with a fork and knife no. yeah i think that's that's a difference uh but also it's fun using your hands yeah i mean i like it i wish we ate more with our hands actually it yeah. tastes like the rest of the yeah, day the food is tastier because <laughs> the metal doesn't click right, on your right. on your teeth mm -hmm. <laughs> it's more fun eating with your hands so yeah i think our foods are more or less the same yeah. but i think kenyan food is mwah. sure 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 i like it yeah we won okay what about <laughs> what about quinceanera do you know what that is quinceanera quince quince i know is 15 quince 15 and it's when it's a party that we throw for girls when they turn 15 because that's when they become a woman you see and originally it was so that, you know, she's now able to marry and so on, but it's no longer like that. It's just a tradition stay that you hold a party for, for the girl when she becomes of that age. And in fact, some people don't even throw a party. They just uh, give you a gift, like a trip somewhere. Okay, so... Do you guys, wait, have, do you guys no, have anything like that? No, we don't have, but I have a uh, question. You uh, mean at 15, girls were allowed to get married? Yeah. At 15? Mm wow no we don't have that what we have and i think it's close to that it's the um it's when boys i, I don't know the age the specific age but when you finish uh primary school they get circumcised now they become men and there's a transition party yeah is this a circumcision? i don't know i think there's a transition party i am not so i don't know so much about this because we grew up as girls so i am not so familiar with it but i know after at, the, at a certain age where when boys finish their primary school 
they they get circumcised and then they become men also i don't know if it's in all tribes mm. i don't know if it's in all tribes in kenya but that we still practice that so yeah for us it's the boys they get circumcised and they become men okay so you still do do you still we, do that we practice that we just don't throw a party yeah i don't i actually do think there's a party but i think there's a party i've never attended one but i think there's a party all right yeah so i think okay so for us it's the boys mm -hmm. for you it's the girls which is a bit weird mm. at 15. but who yeah. am i to judge mm. it's I'm an not old judging. custom it's an old custom so it doesn't happen anymore no not really uh, so you can marry uh, um what okay for instance if i'm peruvian and mm. i turn 15 can i marry I mean, I don't even think you can do that by law. But <laughs> yeah. even if you could, most women choose not to marry anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, so it's not a tradition that's being practiced no, nowadays. No, no, no. It's an old thing. But it's still sort of practiced, especially in Mexico, but also in Peru. Uh, okay, that's interesting, guys. I didn't know mm. about that. Yeah. Also, um, what's the age where... Um, because in our culture, when you turn 18, I mean you're supposed to start being responsible, like get out of your parents' house. I mean, your parents don't chase you out, but at 18, come on, you need to start living. Um, La vida loca. Exactly. Yeah, also, also for us, you're not kicked out per se, but you are expected to get a job or at least go to a university or study a career or something. And basically you could stay home, uh, but you're not going to be baby. You're supposed to, uh also contribute do your own laundry maybe bring some food home and be respectful but you are whenever people can if they have a job or something they will go out and live on their own uh so you didn't leave your parents house when you were 30 no 39 <laughs> <laughs> okay i think uh yeah so i think that's a similarity in our cultures you expected to be responsible you're expected to start to go in like you say to go to a university get a degree and then get a job because i find it um some cultures you can stay at your parents house until you're 40. wow yeah that's kind of sad actually <laughs> yeah that's that's stretching yeah. it but anyway we respect all cultures mm -hmm. if your culture is to stay at your parents house until you're 50 or you move in with your no, spouse sure. and your parents in some cultures totally you have fine. to take care of the parents if you're youngest yeah. yeah okay so at mm. least we have we don't have that though no we don't have that either mm. so the age for also when you start drinking alcohol i think it's 18. yeah by law 18 but most people start before <laughs> what do you mean before Even when did you start uh -huh. 14. 14 what? i had i tried it doesn't Who mean gave I was you drinking. alcohol i hope your dad and mom is watching this who gave you alcohol at 14. well they were friends of my sister they gave you the alcohol? No, they just left it there in the kitchen <laughs> and I give it a try. But that doesn't mean you really start heavily drinking. It's just you try, you taste, you find it here and there. People throw parties. You're 16, 15. The first time I tasted wine, I think I was 23. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did they freeze you somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was 23. Yeah, so I think also the alcohol intake, going out for dancing, the minimum age is... 18 and also when you can get an id an identification is 18. yeah and like 18. no i think we can do it we can go to clubs and things at 16. they mm. would allow that ah okay that's interesting yeah but many places want you to be 18. okay mm. let's talk about the stereotypes um in peru and in kenya mm. okay for me this one is a big one because the stereotype that I heard about Latinos is, you know, when I was growing up, we used to have soap operas aired in our national television <laughs> after news. So I would love, I would watch those soap operas and uh, my favorite were Storm of a Paradise, Pasión Morena, Pasión Secreto Morena. del Amor. So, <laughs> and of course, it's Latinos who act in this. And so I grew up thinking, oh, wow, um, Latinos must be romantic people because in the movies of course they serenade their spouses they buy them flowers gifts um they were really nice and uh but guys 
let me tell you <laughs> what you watch in the movies it's not it's not that bad in reality but if you have this stereotype that latinos are romantic thou and behold drop it because that's not true well i'm not saying you guys are not romantic but i think the soap operas made me grow up with these expectations sure. <laughs> with these expectations yeah, and yeah. Uh, there was this one actor called william levy mm -hmm. yeah i was like wow he was romantic sure the soap opera everyone's <laughs> handsome and romantic <laughs> and rich you know sure sure well i mean i totally get that that's why i got you some flowers today see yeah thank you but this happens on special occasions like today so guys the stereotype that i heard about latinos is they're these super super romantic people and um they they're okay not so romantic no, but i think some more than others yeah sure. some more than others yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> okay my stereotype for not just kenya but all of africa is not a good one because it's based on what I would see on the news growing up when they would show images uh, from broadcasting in, in Africa. There was poverty and un underdevelopment and they would show starving children and things like that. So I grew up thinking all of Africa is like that and, and it's so wrong and people still think that. And they don't know that there's so many cultures, vibrant cultures, big they cities, me. innovation happening. Yeah. I mean, just in PESA alone, most countries, including this one, are still dreaming it. So yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a negative one, but I'm glad it was wrong. It's so wrong. Yeah, that's uh, also in the movies. Um, mm. Most movies that you see, they don't show the rich part of Africa. They show the slums, the poverty, people dying of hunger. But we are more than that. Yeah, the rich housewife. Nairobi. <laughs> Nairobi is an awesome city, no? Yeah, Nairobi, Kigali. Maputo, yeah. Cape Town. So there's more. As uh, those are just stereotypes. Mm. So his stereotype is wrong. My stereotype is 50-50. 50-50. But I think um, also as we grow up, we we learn that it's like expecting to um, the movies, uh, like to live what you see in the movies. Yeah, yeah which is not realistic that's but why there are stereotypes you know? yeah that's why there are stereotypes yeah. okay that's interesting so guys i think you should before you say africa is poor you should get up and go out there and see there's there's more to that and girls and boys um you should <laughs> visit colombia peru um mm. bolivia and see the latinos for yourselves and you can be the judge i mean you'll have fun yeah, I'm judging from this, but maybe this is not. He doesn't represent all the Latinos. That's why I'm saying it's 50 50. Right. Because I still think there are people there who say, Well, have you never serenaded me? Have you seen anybody serenading you? No, but you can do it. Okay. I'll work that out. With those things. What are they called? Those uh, bands? The mariachis. Yeah. Mm. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just dreaming, guys. Keep dreaming. This is a reality. Uh -huh. Okay, guys. So that's all we're going to give you today because that's still a lot mm -hmm. and that's for some of our similarities and differences and then the stereotypes that we share with you yeah guys we'll be sharing more about our cultures because we are two cultures but we live one lifestyle make sure you stay tuned for the next episode and like i said guys pancho is going to make us his favorite kenyan dish which is ugali i can't wait to see the mess in the kitchen see you next time guys <laughs> bye Ciao.